So in the previous video, I talked a little bit about what an analytical chemist actually does and some of the role that they play in the research arena. Now let's look at the perspective that an analytical chemist brings to the table because everybody has kind of a thought process and a way that they approach a problem. And analytical chemists are no different. They have a way of approaching problems. So let's explore this as a five-step process. So in step one, we will identify and define a problem. There may be a new sample or some kind of thing that we would like to investigate. And so we'll identify that and we'll establish some parameters that we need to meet, some criteria. From there, we'll have step two, which is to design an experimental procedure to look at solving this problem. When we're designing an analytical procedure, we need to look at a few things. We need to look at the criteria. And this is what are we trying to solve? What, what would constitute success? If we're looking for lead in some water, we need to define what range of concentration we're looking for. And therefore, then we can see if we've been successful. Because if we do not have criteria, then we haven't defined enough to investigate it. We are also going to think of interference. So if there is something that we know is inside of our sample that will hinder or somehow interfere with the analysis process, either by increasing how much we think of something is in the sample or decreasing how much we think is in the sample, we have to have a way to deal with that. We also need validation. How do we know that our measurement actually worked? We'll have to check that somehow. Sometimes that is by doing a different analytical method that we have already established, but maybe it takes longer, maybe it's not as well suited, but we can check with this method and another method, or we can make a sample where we know how much of something is in there, and then we can see if we're getting the answer that we expect. And that's validation. We will have to come up with a method when we're designing our analytical procedure, and we'll have to think about how we're going to sample the material. Now for a lot of times what you may have experienced is being given a sample that readily dissolves and it doesn't have interference and other things in it and it's very easy to prepare. Perhaps the preparation is only a dilution step. 
when we're looking at an analytical design of a method, we have to think about how are we going to sample this. We have to have a plan. We have to think about what containers we're going to keep this sample in, what temperature, where the sample was taken from. All of these things come into play. And we'll talk about those more later, but this is, these are things that an analytical chemist thinks about because they're important. From there, we will then conduct the experiment. And gather some data. While we're doing this, we will need to calibrate. We'll need to calibrate our equipment, our instrumentation, our glassware, anything like that. And we will also need to make standards. We'll need to standardize some things. You might have already done this when doing a titration. You may have standardized the concentration of your titrant. And that's a good exposure to this process. But there are other ways of standardizing. In step four, we will need to analyze the data. In this step, we will verify our results. Do any stoichiometric calculations, any kind of things like that. And we will also do statistical analysis. Statistical analysis will let us know how accurately we know what we were trying to measure. And it will also let us compare between new methods and established methods. That way we can look at the data and say with confidence we know what's going on. Now, once we get to step four, then we will actually look back at step two and we could actually make a little loop here and we will work on our method. And we'll repeat this as necessary. So once we've analyzed the data, we'll have a better understanding of what's going on and we may need to change our method going forward. Once we change our method, we will then have to collect more data, analyze that data, and then if necessary, we can repeat it again until we actually have solved our problem, which is the last step. And I'll write it over here. In step five, we're going to propose a solution. Once we've completed what we're doing here in steps two to four, Once we do that, we're going to ask ourselves a couple more questions. Is the answer adequate? And have we discovered any new problems? Both of these 
and step one identifying a problem and then proceeding forward and then also step five engage in the greater chemistry community and even beyond it into medical and, and other professions many times other people will identify a problem tell it to an analytical chemist and ask for help then we will look at the problem iteratively work on it and then we'll come back with a solution and talk to the original people and and say i think i've solved it here's my solution what do you think and they can evaluate if it's an adequate answer and we'll be looking at that too to this original problem and they may also identify some new problems that come up and we might too so when we're looking at things like this and this kind of feeds back into step one especially if we identify a new problem this is kind of the perspective of an analytical chemist they're very very careful about how we design an experiment how we're thinking about the measurement every step in what that sample goes through is carefully recorded every type of glassware that's utilized when things were calibrated many things are very carefully noted down and the idea is to develop a new method that other people can use that an analytical chemist does not need to do over and over and over again and then we'll share that with a wider community maybe even designing a new instrumentation that then they can use and answer even more questions and help them with their research and so that's what an analytical chemist brings they're very careful about identifying how to make a measurement so with that thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video